This didn't happen to me, but to a very close friend of mine. I've heard a lot about coyotes and skinwalkers and had a weird experience or two with coyotes. The creepiest was waking up to my sleeping bag being surrounded in paw prints without even hearing them during the night. But never anything paranormal, so to speak. Patrick's story, however, kept me from going back to my favorite backcountry secret stash. He was leaving the area one morning. He had been camping there a couple days and said there was a coyote that always seemed to be close by, like in his peripheral vision, but never overt. He loaded up his truck and started to drive down the wash out to the fire road. At the end of the wash, he could hear the coyote following him. When he pulled onto the road, it was running next to him. Now he was freaking out, so he sped up. He said he was going 35 or so, and it was running along beside him. Definitely not possible. When he looked back, the coyote was running on two legs and was wearing what Patrick said looked like buckskin pants. An instant later, it was a person wearing a coyote fur keeping pace with his truck. He looked again. It was gone. We never went back to the grove after that. This took place in the 1950s, when my mother was small, about six. She said she used to play with her little cousin who was five, on the road, while her mother herded sheep with her brother, and her father left on the wagon to get water a few miles down. Her cousin's mother lived near her family, so they had company for the most part. Neighbors lived about three miles west and four miles to the south. It was dirt roads. The rural area that they lived in was covered in forest, so there were a lot of tall pines, cider, and oak trees everywhere. It was a great place in Arizona, not too far from the New Mexico border, and not too far from Window Rock, which was the headquarters of Navajo Land. They were playing by the abandoned dirt road, just the two of them, far, far away from the house and the main dirt road, past a large number of trees. They were having the best time just by themselves playing with their dolls. Suddenly, my mother smelled something. It was like rotting meat, and she heard a crunch of sticks and leaves behind her. She looked back towards the large pine tree that leaned. Under it sat a woman with waist-long, dark peppered hair. She was just watching them as they played. She was wearing a lot of sterling silver and turquoise jewelry. She had body paint with black grease that stunk and wore a coyote pelt to cover herself. My mother said that she couldn't move and just stared at it, just as it stared back at her. And by no means was this woman pretty in the least. The woman had a demonic look, with what could be described as bloodlust, as her eyes trailed back and forth between my mom and her little cousin. Her little cousin wasn't even aware of it yet, because she was a ways up, playing in the mound of sand. Heart pumping, ears ringing, my mom said she was so scared. Her breath felt stolen, and the smell was so bad that she was getting dizzy, yet she couldn't move. Finally, she started muttering to her cousin in Navajo, Vivian, Vivian, there's something under the tree. Vivian, there's something under the tree, run. Vivian looked up and saw the lady. Screaming in terror, Vivian burst into tears as the lady watched them, smiling. The woman raised a finger and beckoned them to come over. When my mom grabbed Vivian and ran down towards the main road, just in time for my grandpa, who was coming back from getting water with the horse-drawn wagon. Dad, she said, there's something sitting under the tree over there. Her father got angry and started yelling at them. Why are you playing way back out there? Get in, it's probably just your imagination. He looked over her, and then he saw it. He saw the old lady, and she had gotten closer to them. That's a skinwalker, he said. Come on. And then they ran back towards the house. He went back with her older brothers, but they never found it again. There was only one person with hair that long, and that was his cousin who had no kids and lived seven miles west of them. My mom said that she couldn't ever forget seeing that. It was a traumatic experience just knowing what could have happened to them if it had gotten to them first. I was spending a month with my cousins at my grandma's house. It was August, and my cousin's ages ranged from 10 to 15. I was the oldest, being 15. I was staying with a 10, 13, and 14-year-old. We stayed up telling scary stories often, but one night, a few weeks in, we decided to make a campfire out back. My grandma's house is in a rural suburb. The neighbors aren't too far when you're driving down the road to her house. But in the backyard, it's thick forest with man-made paths through it. With man-made paths through it. 
Each house is on a hill, so only part of the basement was actually underground. That isn't important until later, though. So, we're towards the east of her yard, in a smallish patch of open land. You couldn't see the neighboring yards from there, and there was probably three quarters of a mile to each side of us that belonged to my grandma. It was maybe eleven at night, and we were playing truth or dare after telling scary stories, and my fourteen-year-old cousin dared me and the thirteen-year-old to go walk through the paths for ten minutes or so. I said yes right away, as I wasn't easily scared and rather level-headed, but my younger cousin was a bit more hesitant. We didn't bring a flashlight because it wasn't pitch dark yet, and we could see enough to not die. We were walking through the paths for about five minutes and could barely see the fire through the trees when we decided to turn. In the middle of the path was a large dog-like creature, hunched over with its front hands an inch from the ground. What I remember most was how its eyes were so fucking bright white. It was a humanoid dog, shaped with a human-like head, but a dog-like body, but human hands and feet. It looked right at us, and I know I was paralyzed with fear, as it dashed away the opposite way from us, towards a creek that ran through the yard. Eventually, my cousin and I screamed bloody murder, and the other cousin and my grandma ran to us. I don't remember much here, because I was really disoriented and I couldn't think properly, but I did wake up in bed, so I assumed that I was brought up to the house. All the kids slept in the basement, in a big room with sliding glass doors to the outside, as the room was on the side that wasn't underground. My bed was pressed against a big glass window, and I could see my cousins playing outside down below. The house is in Michigan, so it gets slightly chilly, even in the end of August. And there was a slight breeze, so I put on a jacket and ran to join them outside, skipping breakfast, not wanting to miss out on anything fun. When I got down there, I could tell that they weren't playing, but rather running to get my grandma. Her dogs, both of them, were dead, ripped open. That night, we went to bed early. I woke up at maybe two in the morning because I felt something hit my head. My cousins were all sitting on the double bed opposite me, on the other side of the room. There was one bunk bed and two double beds, the double beds for me and my 14-year-old cousin. They were being quiet and staring at me. The 13-year-old nodded his head towards the window. I froze. They all looked afraid. I turned my head slightly to the side, and I saw a really messed up looking face pressed up against the window with gaping eyes looking down at me. I screamed so fucking loud and bolted. My grandma called the police after I told her what happened, and they found nothing. I went home after that, and I have never been there during the night again. I'm Danae, Navajo, and boy have I heard a lot of stories growing up in the reservation. Well, I've never seen anything myself, which I'm grateful for, I have benefited by being around the people who have. There is a different kind of evil that exists in the quiet high deserts and deep sandstone canyons of Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, even Colorado. I can only describe it as an ancient evil. Now, there are some helpful ceremonies, rituals, and traditions that are still practiced to this day. Hell, even a local hospital has an on-duty medicine man. But it seems to be a double-edged sword. What I mean is there's also black magic which most Diné will not even acknowledge or speak of. We are very superstitious and are heavy with taboos. You will find this with most First Nation people. From Alaska to Argentina, it's just something you don't do and fear that it will get the attention of unwanted spirits or harmful beings. Skinwalkers are just a few stories that keep me up at night with the covers over my head. Here's a quick one for you. A Navajo tribal police officer was driving west on what used to be officially named Highway 666. It was lately snowing, and he sees an old woman walking on the side of the road. How she got there, or where she was going, was not apparent, because she was so far out in the middle of nowhere. He didn't see her right away, but as he passes he noticed that she's dressed in traditional clothing, a shawl, dress, moccasins, and her hair is in the traditional bun. This isn't too odd, because many elders still choose to dress traditionally. But why was she out in such cold weather this late at night? Hitchhiking, maybe. He passed her too quickly, and now has to turn around. And as he makes a U-turn, he notices she's nowhere to be seen. 
This is fairly flat terrain, and he has for sure seen an old woman walking. He pulls his squad car over and steps out with his flashlight. Confused, he manages to find the woman's footprints in the shallow snow. He follows the footprints until they suddenly turn into what look like dog footprints, leading away from the road in a hurry. He immediately jumps back into the squad car and meets up with another officer near his patrol. He is a little shaken up, but asks the other officer if he has ever seen anything like that. The officer tells him that he has. He also explains that sometimes it's an old woman, sometimes a very beautiful young girl, but always on that road and always in the snow, waiting for the right good Samaritans to let her into their car. I still get nervous driving those wide open spaces at night. I keep my eyes strictly on the road and turn my music up high. I rarely pick up hitchhikers, but I never pick them up at night. Every summer, my family and I go to camp up in Ellsworth, Maine. It's about a three hour drive from my house. The camp itself is about an hour from the nearest town. I've been going to this camp my entire life, as my family owns it, and we've never had an incident like this happen before. I was watching TV in the middle of the night. Both of my brothers and my parents had gone to bed. I heard a noise coming from the kitchen and realized that the dogs needed to go outside to do their business. So I took my brother's two pit bulls and my dog outside after turning on the porch light. I walked around to the front yard and let the dogs off leash. It's so incredibly dark in the woods in Maine that the porch light really only illuminated the porch and nothing else, so I tried to keep an eye on them. I was momentarily distracted when I saw a loon, a wild bird, on the lake. When I looked back, I saw that the pit bulls were both looking at something in the woods. I couldn't see what it was, but I assumed that they'd seen a squirrel or a raccoon. It was then that I realized I didn't see Alfie anywhere. She's an awfully small dog, and she's completely black. I called for her a few times, and heard some soft whimpering right where the dogs had been looking earlier. I took a couple steps in that direction, and called for her again, worried that she may have gotten her paw stuck between the rocks, or gotten stuck in a snake hole. Suddenly, I felt something moving behind me. I whipped around and looked down. It was Alfie. She'd been staying close to me the whole time. I just hadn't seen her. So naturally, I was thinking, if Alfie is here, what the fuck is in the woods? I took another step forward and the pit bulls began to growl. They were slowly advancing and were now on either side of me, looking right into the blackness of the woods. I quickly picked up Alfie and began to back up very slowly. I'm not sure what I thought was there. But there are a lot of animals in Maine, and I figured the dogs knew better than I did. Since I couldn't see anything, right as I turned around, I heard the most absolutely bone-chilling thing I've ever heard in my life. Coming from the direction of the woods, I heard something, or someone, call Alfie's name. It sounded almost as if it was trying to mimic me, but it was just all wrong. The voice sounded really distorted, and it almost seemed to wail. I freaked the fuck out and ran inside with the dogs. I have no idea what was out there in the woods. My camp is essentially a log cabin overlooking a lake, and our nearest neighbor, who's also family, lives at least a half mile in the opposite direction of where the thing was. It creeps me out to this day. This all happened about five years ago. One night, a few of my friends decided after a night of hanging out that we'd go on an adventure at about 3 a.m., We took a ride about 50 miles to this old Spanish ruin in New Mexico that was once the seat of the Inquisition. I can't for the life of me remember what the place is called, so we jumped the front gate to the place and started exploring. One of my friends brought a flute with him and he started playing it and about 30 seconds into his mediocre playing, something started screaming really, really loud on the tops of the long destroyed walls of the place. It was going from wall to wall really quickly screaming the most blood-curdling scream you've ever imagined. We got the fuck out of there. One of my friends actually pissed his pants and drove for a few hours to a national monument where we planned to camp out for the rest of the weekend. We got there at probably 6 or 7 a.m. and set up our camp. After a few hours just talking about what the hell happened at the ruins, I went to take a piss about 300 feet away from the camp. This is where everything starts getting a little fuzzy. I remember seeing two dust devils coming our way, and when I turned around again, two of my friends were there, and they were motioning me to follow them. I couldn't help but follow them, like I was being pulled behind them in shackles. 
I followed them for what seemed like 10 or 15 minutes, and then I snapped out of it. These weren't my friends. They had bright red hair with my friends' faces and cat eyes. Both of these friends were brunette. I stopped walking, and they looked at me with the most terrifying gaze I've ever seen. Monsters in movies are nothing compared to this. I turned around and ran as fast as I could back the way that I came. After about five minutes of a full sprint, I got back to the rock that I'd pissed at and found our camp. Everyone was there, still sitting around talking, and didn't even notice that I was gone. I told them what happened, what the look-alike skinwalkers, and we packed up everything and left probably within 10 minutes. We got the hell back to Albuquerque, 